The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. Oh, All right. We got we to gotta get Wizard Swap up here one of these days, too. A lot of instant exchanges out there right now, so they're they're all you know they're all competing, um, and obviously some are I guess better than better than others in terms of price, in terms of whether or not they shotgun KYC. Uh, but it's interesting to see the amount of them, and I think you know a lot of that ecosystem is growing out of the you know the need there for people to get into Monero, right? So it, the instant exchanges have really been uh, a very large on ramp off ramp for people. This is yeah, this is very much true, and I like Wizard Swap in the the stances they take that uh, most uh, instant exchanges can't do or aren't willing to do. So, anyways, with that being said, let's get into the news. Hold up my screen Take here. We got three hundred and fifty three live viewers right now. Keep keep getting the word out, guys. Retweet it, share it, grow it. All right, guys. So first news link here, we've got a tweet from Cloak Wireless. As a privacy and security focused nationwide wireless provider that has solved the SIM swap attack problems, should oh, wait, we bring up your bring up your screen? Are you showing a screen? Oh, I shared it. Didn't bring it up. There we go. Sorry, guys. Uh, first news link is a tweet from Cloak Wireless. As a privacy and security focused nationwide wireless provider that has solved the SIM swap attack problem, should we accept hashtag Monero in addition to BTC and credit cards? And overwhelmingly, majority of this poll was, yes, Monero for extra privacy. So based on this poll result, it looks like Cloaked Wireless will most likely add support for Monero. Cloaked Wireless is a more privacy and security oriented uh, service, cellular service provider. And they take extra care to not just let some underpaid uh, support staff give away your, your access to your phone number. Uh, if because somebody says it's theirs, claimed it's theirs. Uh, very cool, and they accept Bitcoin right now, and looks like they'll accept Monero very soon. So awesome, good to see that. Uh, I'll definitely be trying their service out if they accept Monero. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I've been I've been DMing with them. I told them once they add, um, you know, we could add them to Adoption Alley and uh, get them up on XMR Bazaar as a Monero accepting business. That'd be super cool. Uh, yeah, we have a lot of other great options for phone numbers uh, like Silent Link and JMP.chat, but those ones are uh, JMP.chat's VoIP number, and then Silent Link is uh, inbound only, not out. Uh, this would be one of the first ones that lets you actually do in and outbound uh, SMS and voice with a real phone number, is what it looks like uh, with a monthly plan. So, very cool. Very cool to see that. Next up, we got a tweet from Jeremy Kaufman. I saw this one earlier this week. It's pretty funny. I'll go ahead and play this video. Uh, the FBI visited my house today for free speech acts they knew were not crimes. You can see the shame on their faces. This is the Democratic regime manifest. Let's play this video. Hey there. Jeremy? Yeah. How are you? Here we are. This is like <laughs> the most badass. Can you give your full name, please? Is that sufficient to identify? Is there only one O'Donnell affiliated with the FBI? In New Hampshire, yes. Could you please state your full name, sir? Could you please stop recording? No. It's First Amendment right. Okay. What's your name, sir? Okay. Absolutely not. You can show me your name and identification, or, or I'm going to go back inside my house. Okay. I don't really want to broadcast my... Uh... Oh, this is going out right after you guys no, walk know, away. So, that's so you can show me your name or ID. You can walk away. <laughs> Which one are I'm not going to talk to people who claim to be federal agents unless they can show me identification. Do you see our badges? I, I need to see... Is your full name on that badge? No. Nope. I'd like to see something with your full name or I'm not going to talk to you. I prefer you not to broadcast. That's this okay. will be going online as soon as you walk away. Well, all I want to do is talk to you about a post that was made. And if you well, happen to be the one that made the I want to talk to you about you guys coming here. Say you make a salary of, I don't know what, low 100K? You guys making six figures? Factor in 50% expenses, overhead, maybe 100% expenses. Talking about burning a couple hundred dollars an hour just here, let alone all the time you guys are spending 
to investigate something that you know is not against the law, right? Like so, you, you're uh, familiar with. We're, we're, we're so then, why would sure. you come? Because we want, wanted to make sure that there weren't any. Other no, threats. you're coming because you're 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 part of a regime that does this kind of thing when you know laws aren't being broken, and that's an embarrassment, man. Didn't you guys read the Constitution? Do you not believe in America? Sir, like, how do you do your jobs you and go time. home? We appreciate it. <laughs> you're walking away because nothing we did is against the law. And you guys are fuckheads that try to act like bullies. And I hope you go home and are embarrassed. You can't even say your name on camera because you know that what you're doing is embarrassing. You know Americans that believe in the Constitution think you're laughable. And you go home and you think about what you did today. Go home and think about it, you cowards. Oh my God. Drive away. <laughs> Drive away. You're not welcome. You should be embarrassed. Embarrassing. You guys are embarrassing. This is insane. I mean, he really, he really nailed it. He he owned he owned that mo that moment. We've had Jeremy Kaufman on the show before. Uh, he's awesome. the create he's the creator of uh, Library, which the SEC yep. went after. Yep, and he's one of the original founders of the Free State Project. If I remember correctly. Yes. Yep. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's funny how he tra treated them like little children. Like, uh, Dad, go to your room. Go think about <laughs> what you've done. It's great. It's they great. they were coming to his house. He, you know, the way he owned that conversation because they're like, "We're here to talk to you about a," and then he just stopped them right there. He's like, "Well, I'm here to talk to you about this," and like, and that was it. He just he just owned it at that point. Um, and it's true. Like, why are federal agents showing up at people's homes? in their black SUVs, knocking on their door and intimidating them about things they've posted on the internet, you know? Yeah, I don't even no... know what this was relating to it, specifically. And they're, but... admit, they're admitting there was no law broken. <laughs> yeah. We, we just came to talk to you. Like, so So now the federal government is just going to come and knock on our door and, and give us give us advice on, on on how we should be doing things, even though even if we're following the law. Yep. Um, that is just, wow complete overbreach and uh, a real fuck up on their part because i mean this thing has gone completely i mean viral. this has been happening for quite a while but i'm glad that yeah someone like jeremy kaufman can totally just get in their face and basically tell them to fuck off it's great cecile tip 25 cents haha ha, go home and think about what you did this is funny so yeah um yeah, i think we got another couple of super chats up here i don't know if these are red okay. but no uk tip 75 cents thank you Deverick. And XMR P2P tipped one dollar. Thank you, Sunita, for hosting last week while Doug was busy. Busy. W's in the chat for Devrick and Sunita. And yes, Roy, the link will be in the description uh, once they get uploaded after the stream to all the tweets. All right. So next, next up, we've got uh, a tweet from Mr. Brainship Elon. Uh, troubling. Hillary Clinton suggests jailing Americans for posting misinformation engaged in and boosting Trump back in 2016. But I also think there are Americans who are uh, engaged in uh, this kind of propaganda uh, and whether they should be civilly or even in some cases criminally charged uh, is something that would be a better deterrence because then I mean, is this even really like surprising? Is it even really news? That uh, Hillary Clinton wants people to go to jail for misinformation or prosecuted for misinformation. Uh, air quote, air quote, and misinformation. Scary though. Let's move on. Uh, we've got a tweet from Stephen Stone here. Um, this is no, in relation. This, this is scary. This to, is scary. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think there's probably more context. Just I'll go and just play the video. I'll read the tweet. Hope you're enjoying the news that your government can remotely detonate pagers. Just know that your smartphone has a lot more potential power than an old pager. Here's a video of an iPhone being induced to explode. Uh, so this is in reference to what happened um, over this past week where I guess some people, some Hezbollah people, people um, who were who are part of Hezbollah working for Iran had everyone seen the clip at this point. They had a pager and it just basically blew up in their hands uh, very violently. And people are 
figuring out exactly how that happened. What was going on there? Was it, did they blow up the battery? Was it like, did it have bombs inside of it? And, uh, I'm not the person to be able to speak on that. Um, I think in all the I know current, is that, res current research, it's been, kind of been determined that it was a supply chain hack. I think they that's even said that's what it looks the, like. For the sure, phones were coming out of um, Hungary. I mean, the, the beepers, the beepers were like produced in Hungary. So you know, like the 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 state, whatever the the, the agents involved in this, it sounds like they overtook this this production right the production of beepers they somehow you know whether they took over the entire company or own it um and started producing very impressive beepers. nonetheless very impressive nonetheless now this yeah. people saying that it was the battery that blew up it's it's almost certainly definitely not i mean as you can see in this clip here yeah they they caused this phone to violently explode um maybe not quite as badly as it did in the what actually happened over this past week but uh, they're using probably uh, they're using a tool to to induce heat into the phone, uh, causing the battery to rapidly heat up. Is what it looks like to me. Um, I, I don't have any other context around this clip. There's a couple other tweets here. Um, you can't just make a phone's battery just blow up like that. You need some kind of external source, like making it rapidly heat up to do that. Uh, the only other way is if there was pre-planted explosives inside the device. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, can't can't you like overclock these things potentially override systems and no, I mean the know? phone itself. It, it, I doubt that there's a way that the phone itself can cause itself to heat up that rapidly in order to make the battery explode like we just saw in this clip. Now, f phone batteries can overheat and catch on fire, uh, which we've seen with phones like the Galaxy Note Seven, but that's a very different situation where it's not exploding; it's more of like catching on fire, right? How about, how, about, how about a Tesla or, or you know, the, these motorcycles, these electric bikes that blow up already on their own? <laughs> I mean, there's there's so many devices. I mean, the the real eye opener here is, all right, so maybe they're not being hacked um, and then caused to blown up. But this this concept of uh, taking over the supply chain, manipulating the supply chain to put to put a bomb in it, like small bombs is has been proven. So, you know, if we see it here, they could probably do it to many more things. And it's like, then how cheap could that could they potentially make it? Could it be yeah. commoditized to the point where like everybody's refrigerator can blow up at will when they want to blow it up? Like, I mean, you, who knows, right? Uh, I mean, it's it's just showing proof of concept. It's pretty, pretty scary stuff. We got a super chat from definitely not body one dollar. This is reminiscent of what's happening in the UK. FBI trying to normalize having conversations with your tweets. Yes, I've seen a lot of clips of um, police or you know federal agents in the UK coming to people's houses to oh just we just want to chat, we just want to have a talk about these things that you said or this thing that you believe in that you know we don't want you to you know just just want to have a talk you know pretty dystopian um and yeah they're trying to do that in the u.s as well but i think they're going to be met with uh at least some more amount of resistance mm -hmm. in the united states uh than in the uk with that happening let's move on to the next story uh wow we've just got uh terrible people after terrible people a tweet from gavin newsom i just signed a bill to make this illegal in the state of california you can no longer knowingly distribute NAD or other election communications that contain Materially deceptive content, including deep fakes. Manip manipulating a voice in an ad like this one should be illegal. I'll be signing a bill a matter of week to make sure it is. Elon Musk retweets altered Kamala Harris campaign ad. Which, uh, I, this, as far as I understand, is just a parody. And probably, obviously, a parody. Um, and I guess this wants, Gavin Newsom wants to make this illegal in California. So no more parodies, guys. You can't be funny anymore. That is like, you know, one, one of the most Im important aspects of free speech, right, is protecting the ability to parody. <laughs> right? yep. If you can't par parody things, you can't make fun of things, you can't comment on things. Uh, you've been silenced in terms of being able to speak out against shit you don't agree with. Uh, we got a tweet from Monero Bowl here. Lightning is over. And we're showing a picture of a graph of nodes, channels, network capacity, and capacity per channel. Uh, so I guess the amount of channels suddenly dropped 
off for some reason. And the amount of nodes has also quite rapidly dropped off. Uh, I imagine this is due to the closing of several, uh, if this is true, probably the closing of several lightning apps uh, that people have had to migrate away from. Uh, and network capacity has gone way down. And I guess this this chart comes from this website, bitcoinvisuals.com. Uh, not sure how they're measuring stuff or if it's accurate. Uh, I think we got a we got a reply from Seth here. Pretty sure that's a bug on the site. Doesn't seem to make sense. It doesn't match other LN metrics like this. So maybe it's not true. As mempools.space reporting something totally, totally different results uh, where we actually have a large spike in Lightning Network nodes. So whichever one it is, I have no idea. Um, but who cares? Ellen sucks. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of my that's kind of my take. I'm just like whatever. Uh, just use Monero. Yes. Next up, uh, I get a tweet from Hakan. Prosecutors appear to be able to asterisk asterisk de-anonymize Tor by tapping servers for years and doing timing analysis. Uh, I don't think this is anything new. Uh, in one case, Ricochet related to CSAM, they did this four times, or to telco provider to identify customer connecting to entry node. This uh, isn't really anything. Okay, this is all in German. I don't even know if I can open this. Maybe Brave will translate for me. Uh, I don't think this is anything new. I mean, this has been known about for a long time, is that uh, you can do network timing attacks and you can obtain the IP of someone entering via via a, an entry node uh, and try to correlate with timing attacks. I mean, it's the same thing with VPNs. It's just a lot harder with Tor. Uh, if, if Devrick's still around when we get to viewers on stage, I think he, he has some good, good insights into, into Tor. Might I mean, maybe if he wants there. to chime on that. Yeah. Uh, let's go to, oh, yay, <laughs> a clip from Michael Saylor. Uh, you're imagining a world where the governments and the banks are going away. They aren't going away, Saylor. My point is, wouldn't you like, uh, wouldn't you like for JP Morgan to just pay you 5% of your Bitcoin value risk-free? I mean, ideally I'd like 500%, but I want to keep my Bitcoin more than I want the five or the 500%. Chasing after well, that, no one's going to pay five hundred percent interest on a loan. Yeah, and I think I think the five percent as well. I mean, if everybody's got their Bitcoin in five percent, well, how are you going to make more Bitcoin? Eventually, you're going to have more Bitcoin needs to be paid than there are there is Bitcoin in existence. I'm not talking about issuing more Bitcoin. I'm saying that that the current risk-free uh, rate. If if you have money at J.P. Morgan, you put it in a money market, it pays five hundred fifty basis points. So wouldn't you like to get 550 basis points on your Bitcoin balance without converting it to dollars, right? Right now you have to convert it to US treasuries to get 550 basis points. But if you do it, it's effectively risk-free. I mean, it's, it's pretty close to risk-free. It's not. No. I, I don't think it's risk-free. I think it's uh, it, it works with fiat. Unless the US government fails. The, I mean, the, the US government's not gonna let JP Morgan fail. Yeah, but the U.S. government has already failed several times over the last century. In 1934, they defaulted on gold. In 1971, they defaulted again on gold. Okay, well, fine. So now you're going all maxi on me. But if that's the point, let me just make the point that there's no way that El Salvador is going to pay their expenses without selling their Bitcoin if no one's willing to give them yield on the Bitcoin. Right? In your world, if you have expenses, you're going to have to sell the asset. But you're going to have incomes. So you cover your expenses from your income and you keep stacking sats and you grow up your stack forever. Well, the, well, the point is, if if the capital doesn't generate a return, it's non perform It's a non performing asset. So you need you need to, you know, you need to address the issue. If I put one hundred billion dollars into Bitcoin and I get zero percent yield, that's just as bad as I have one hundred billion in U.S. bonds that pay zero percent yield. In both cases, they're non performing assets. I'm going to have to sell my house, my kids, my whatever to pay my hospital bills if I don't get any yield off of my assets. It's it's non-performing. Look, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, and I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying that in a world in which the money supply is fixed and there's no lender of last resort, in a world in which J.P. Morgan doesn't have a magic money printer, because J.P. Morgan prints money. It's not just the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve that print money. J.P. Morgan is also able to print money, and they can borrow at the federal, from the Federal Reserve at the lowest interest rate. Right. So in that kind of fiat privilege system, 
they are able to offer you 5% because they are printing that money. They're going to be able to pay you. They, they make the billion dollars that they lend you in the first place out of thin air. And then they get money from the interest that they make on other people's billions of dollars that they made out of thin air. That, that game stops in Bitcoin. There's no lender of last resort. So now if you're a 22-year-old and you have a business idea, you need to find somebody to get you equity. And I don't see that as a problem. Why is that a problem? You get equity, you share in the upside, you share in the downside. 10 years from now, we're not, we're still going to have the dollar, say, Fadine. We're still going to have banks. We're still going to have governments, right? You're imagining a world where the governments and the banks go away. It's not. Seller is the opposite of a crypto anarchist. He really is. Punk. He just doesn't get it. He never got it. He was, he was, he was a complete laggard. He didn't get into Bitcoin until what, 2020? I mean, the guy, he never understood it. He never got it. BRB um, guys, I'm going to hit up my, my buddies at JP Morgan, just add a couple zeros to the money supply. I mean, he did get it in that ultimately that is what Bitcoin offers, right? It's digital property, and that's what he sees it as. Um, and he doesn't see it as, as money because it's not. It doesn't function well as money. Uh, Saifedean, on the other hand, wants it to be what Monero is. Uh, use, people live off of it, uh, spend it. Um, but it doesn't function well for those purposes. Got a super That's chat from Nihilist, 50 cents. Prevent tour time attacks by putting a VPN in front of it. This will mix you with other users. Uh, yeah, I I agree. Uh, this is a surprisingly controversial opinion to have uh, in some spaces. But yeah, I think it can benefit you using a VPN in front of Tor if you're extra targeted for whatever reason. Mm. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead. Let's see, we've got a couple more here. We All right. Hey, got... uh, Tux, Tux, you're, you're going to be given a workshop down at Monerotopia, right? That's correct. Fantastic. And it's going to be on Graphene OS. Graphene OS. Yeah. Yeah. Another cool one would be just like how, how to use the internet anonymously, right? Like best practices. I don't know. That could be cool. Cool, cool concept, too. I mean, like part of the reason why it's uh, the like using VPN in front of Tor thing is controversial is because like, you the people who set up tor and want people to use tor they want they want it to be like normal users using tor but if everyone's using a vpn then it kind of i guess in a way devalues um the air quote normal user using tor mm -hmm. but in reality using a vpn does can improve um so it, it hurts the network security overall like reduce not necessarily not necessarily um I do see an improvement on an individual use, though, for using a VPN over Tor. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a VPN, and, you know, if they they get the VPN on IP, it can... VPN companies can be subpoenaed to give information and all that, but it's it's an extra layer that helps, ultimately, and it helps to solve the, the timing attack a bit better. Uh, yeah, we, I'm had guy, we had that guy on last week who was uh, all about Tor. He, gave, um, yes. he yep. gave a really good talk on it. And uh, yep. I think yep. he's going to be coming down to Monerotopia. Maybe we will have him run a workshop. All right. We got a tweet from uh, Myra Hurley. Trump did a Bitcoin transaction. No, we just showed everyone how bad Bitcoin's UX is. Let's walk through what happened. Air quote, Trump did a Bitcoin transaction. What do you see in the video? Everything is pre-filled on the phone, which is then handed to Trump. All you need to do is scan the QR code right there. Something goes wrong. So the person next to Trump takes the phone and tries to scan. Someone did a Bitcoin transaction in front of Trump. Something else goes wrong. So yet another person takes over the phone to scan the QR code. What do we see? The app being used is Strike, not the Bitcoin base layer. Someone did a Lightning Network transaction in front of Trump. Only even that is wrong. Strike is not a self-custodial wallet. A custodial wallet is a wallet where a trusted third party manages the private keys on your behalf, like Strike. Someone used a trusted third party to do a Lightning Network transaction in front of Trump. The video continues. After taking over the phone and scanning, the guy probably says, and fantastic, it went through. Only it didn't. Cash only shirt guy takes the phone and the tablet, tries to figure out what went wrong, scans the QR code again, waiting. Oh, it did go through. But did it really? First of all, this wasn't on chain. It wasn't even using a self-custodial Lightning wallet. It used custodial strike. Where is strike available? 
Strike is available to all U.S. residents and residents of Puerto Rico, including New York and U.S. other territories and possessions. Please note that it isn't possible to create an account if you live in an unsupported region. Someone used a trusted third party to do a lightning network transaction in front of Trump using an app that people in the bar can't even install. <laughs> even the eventual completion of the transaction is doubtful. The guy quickly puts away the tablet or phone rather than proudly showing off the completed transaction. Yes, I'm being very cynical here. I'm happy at how far we've come to have a presidential candidate interested in crypto, but this was a terrible showing for crypto. Is this what people expect from the future of money? This was presumably a scripted event with people thinking through the very best way to show off Bitcoin. Yet the best we can do is a long, minute long video of someone trying to pay on his behalf using a custodial wallet that isn't available to the people of New York. Come on. And fantastic, it went through. <laughs> We needed me to bust through the door at that moment. <laughs> oh, it did go through. All right, we're done. Perfect. The first transaction by a president on the Bitcoin protocol. History. You know what that means? Hello, everybody. I got to go back and see those people. Let's go. Come on. Right this way. Thank you. So that was pretty much it. He, yeah, yeah it was not the first Bitcoin transaction. On the it wasn't Bitcoin an protocol. actual Bitcoin. Yeah, it was. It was a custodial, right? custodial lightning transaction. <laughs> um, right. And it was. It's funny because I was actually here a few weeks ago. Uh, this is PubKey. Yes. I have yet um, to be there. You, I can't believe you've been there before me. I actually me. met uh-huh. this guy right here. He's a cool guy. Um, mm-hmm. I met him, and we were on uh, a podcast episode briefly. Uh, but yeah, it's a little disappointing. Um, yeah, it's it's cool that um, I guess in in some ways it's cool, some ways it's not that Trump is interested in the cryptocurrency. Um, do we? Do you know? Uh, are, what are they using there? Are they using BTC Pay Server on their end? I have no idea. Um, I have no idea. I couldn't tell you. You didn't. You didn't but, buy anything there. You didn't. Uh, you didn't buy beer. Was well, not. Bad? I didn't pay for it myself. Um, okay. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea what it was. Because maybe, um, maybe I could just hang out there and get him to add Monero. You know. Yeah, uh, it's disappointing though that it was a. Essentially, it was just a custodial lightning. Um, not even. Not even true lightning. It was just a custodial lightning transaction that clearly had some technical difficulties and if you play back this beginning part you can hear them say technical difficulties um yeah, yeah so not a not a great showing it's like oh this is what it is you, you have to fiddle around with it to get to work uh, not a, not a great showing um obviously like crypto is is currently not as seamless as just tapping your you know credit card at the the payment terminal uh but that's that's got a lot of other stuff going on that makes it not uh non-custodial right and makes it not uncontrollable so does not not get the crypto thing (laughs) no he doesn't he doesn't this is just uh i'm just just selling uh, stuff yeah Yep. I'm getting voters and I'm selling, you know, then he had his announcement the other day, right? Where he's, lo- what, what is it that they're launching? Like some their own no crypto idea. project? I have no idea. It's I don't like even pay like, attention to stuff anymore. They had like a three hour spaces with like the Trump sons and it has nothing to do with Bitcoin. I think it's like their own coin or something. It's like, like you guys just, you don't, you don't, you completely missed the whole concept. I mean, what, what, what they understand, how, they know how, they know how to make money, right? So they'll get all yes. these. Or get a couple super chats yeah. here. Rebel Capitalist tip one dollar. Doug, who do you recommend to present Monero at the yearly Rebel Capitalist Live? Mark Moss usually represents the Bitcoin Maxi perspective. Most people there have no clue about BTC being a butt naked ledger and all the accompanying problems. I'll come down there. 
Like we'll do it. You know, or or we get other people. Yeah, we Number. get uh, you get you get Tux, you get me. Um, shit, obviously, I like somebody like a Howard Chu would be amazing. Uh, uh, Daniel Kim, but we have we haven't seen him around in a while. Um, but yeah, I, I'd be down. I'm sure Tux would be down. Should that, have used cake wallet tipped one dollar. Trump cannot be trust well, trusted. Cake wallet or bust. I agree. Should have used cake wallet. Cake wallet with Monero. Uh, it does surprise me sometimes. Uh, no, Monero obviously is a layer one, it's not a layer two. Uh, it does surprise me sometimes, though. I will send a transaction uh, from Cake Wallet, like just a Monero transaction, using my own node. Uh, and by the time I look back up on my computer screen, it's already been detected. Mm -hmm. So Monero is it's pretty fast. Uh, yeah, in terms of waiting for confirmations, yeah, you have to wait. But if you're if it's a small payment and you are willing to do zero comp, it's very quick. Mm -hmm. So, all right, got a couple more here. Let's go ahead and get through these. Uh, I got a tweet from Monero Revolution. Total fraud penalties for banks since 2000, 389 trillion, no, billion, uh, 345 million, 231,111 dollars. So that's a lot. Um, and that's penalties that banks have paid probably just in the US. Uh, or maybe, well, no, that's Deutsche Bank. Uh, just banks in general. Uh, top 10 current parent companies. Top total penalty. Um, so that's so they paid almost $400 billion of penalties since 2000 uh, banks for doing uh, what banks do. Third of a trillion dollars. Yep. Crazy. Uh, but Monero is for criminals, right? Yes, Monero is for bad boys. You have to be a bad boy to use Monero. Hey, we got a tweet from our beloved Vic Sharma. Hey, look what's on at XMR Bazaar. 2017 Rolls Royce Wraith. We showed this off earlier. You can buy this for a cool 1200 XMR. Two hundred twelve thousand dollars. Is, is that thing bulletproof? I, it's beautiful. Like, <laughs> it better be. It better insane. be for that price. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's like a monster. That's pretty wild. Look at that. That is Crazy. pretty wild. Beautiful. Beautiful. Vic should just keep it and paint it, paint it Monero orange, and put a big ass Monero. Up Giant it. cake wallet <laughs> Monero. Yep. I'm sure he would be down for that if he was going to keep it. <laughs> And last, we have love another to see tweet somebody from... buy it, though, right? I mean, who knows? Yes, would be cool. Straight... would be cool. You never know. Uh oh, looks like the branding got changed to something. Mm. What branding? Let's hide that. Uh... Oh shit! You know what? That's me. I think because I moved because I was trying to play a thing. Hold up. Did I do that? Uh. Whatever. I'm gonna read this off anyway. There we go. Um, it. Last one is a tweet from Vic once again. Fully air gapped Monero transaction in Cake Wallet. So this is Vic showing off very, very, very early features and stuff as usual. Uh, this is an app uh, that Cake is developing that will be basically an air gapped app that'll work with Cake Wallet uh, using the same live QR code protocol that works with Anonero. Mm. So this It'll is, this is similar to out. what Monero, what, what what they call it, theory, uh, kick. No, what were they calling it? No, it's not actually. Well, we'll we'll add later on. We'll add support. Uh, but Sidekick is using like basically the Ledger protocol with Bluetooth. Uh, we'll add support for that later on. This is mm. more of what Anonero is doing, which is live QR Very codes cool. that you scan. So it's truly air gapped. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And so the idea is that you can have your cold storage wallet be like a a graphene os phone and you just you know keep it offline and you can use that to sign your transactions and the main the main point of developing a separate app to do this is that we can remove the network permission from the second app altogether right so mm -hmm. even though if you use graphene os you can manually disable network access for apps if you don't use graphene os you can't even do that um mm -hmm. with this new app it won't even have network permission at all It'll just be purely uh, offline, which will be the point. Would people theoretically be able to use an iPhone for their offline phone for this or no? They like could if they wanted Android. to. If they uh -huh. really, yeah, they could if they really wanted to. 
Um, I'd recommend having like a graphene OS, graphene. Yeah, newer yeah, yeah, graphene yeah. OS phone for something like this, personally. Uh, but yeah, you could you could use whatever you wanted, really. Yeah. So for those who don't totally understand what we're talking about, I mean that that basically becomes could become your new hardware wallet. Some like a, a graphene phone that's just dedicated. It's offline. Yep, yep, yep. It's hold. It's holding your your private keys, your seed, and then whenever you go to spend Monero on your your live device, your other phone, you would sign the transaction with your with this offline phone that's dedicated to just hold your keys. And now you've effectively uh, have have a nice hardware wallet for Monero. And, and, and I've always liked the idea of hardware wallets now that, that would be coming in the form of something like a graphene phone. So you're not on the radar when you're purchasing this hardware wallet, mm -hmm. right? And you're not... Yeah, you have... There's lots of chance of a, like a supply chain attack specific to a hardware wallet. And right. uh, there's less chance of having like a specific attack um, relating to retrieving crypto keys because it's a, it's a, it's a phone, right? It's It's a phone. It's not... It's not like you see someone's ledger sitting out, right? And you're like, oh, yeah, that probably has like tens of thousands, maybe millions of dollars on it. You could just have a spare a spare phone just sitting around somewhere. And if you keep it offline all the time, it'll, you know, it'll all your storage will be fully encrypted and it won't be accessible regardless. Uh, so just turn it on when you need to use it and turn it off when you're done with it. And it'll be a very good solution.